Good morning and welcome to Together in God, a media ministry of Grace Lutheran Church of the ELCA at 202 West Grand Avenue in Eau Claire. We are excited to share with you today God's message of love and hope for all. Please join us now in worship. Welcome. Uh, today is the Reign of Christ Day, or it used to be called Christ the King Sunday, a time where we reflect on this uh, great paradox that Christ uh, is enthroned when he's upon the cross. And so uh, welcome as we reflect on that. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who redeems us in Jesus Christ, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have ignored voices that call for justice. We have neglected actions that witness to your righteousness. We have spoken and acted in ways that disrupt your beloved community. We truly repent of things we have done and left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits so that we may live in newness, follow the way of the Spirit, and build up the body of Christ. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. God hears the prayers of all who call out and restores us to life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare to you the forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our true life, to serve you is freedom and to know you is unending joy. We worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. Abide with us, reign in us, and make this world into a fit habitation for your divine majesty. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Today is a day we remember how Jesus changes the world. There's lots of ways people can change the world. Sometimes people, uh, they, they change whole systems of things so they work more smoothly and are kinder to people. Jesus likes that. Sometimes they say, this is what I want and I'm going to make it the way I want it, and they just make it that way. But what I want you to know, though, is the main way that Jesus changes the world is by forgiving people. That when we get caught doing something that we know we shouldn't have done, that Jesus comes to us and says, you're forgiven, let's try again. Let's start again. And that's a big gift. It's an interesting way to try to change the world. Changing us one person at a time and then bringing us together with friends like these so we can learn how we can together be people that show God, God's love and mercy to other people. I bet you're going to learn a little bit more about that in our Sunday school class today. So let's say a prayer and I will send you with Miss Tammy. Holy and gracious God, we thank you that again and again you're ready to forgive us and help us to start anew. You, you want us to be examples of your love, and the best way to make us that is to show us your love over and over again. And we thank you for that gift. Amen. The first lesson is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherded my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and driven them away, and you who have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiplied. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer, or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. Thanks. Second lesson is from the first chapter of the letter to the Colossians. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, the things visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. 
He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to recognize, reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Then they came to the place that is called the Skull. They crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one at his right 
and one at his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and save us. But the others rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And indeed, we have been justly condemned. For we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace Grace to you and peace from the God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I've noticed during my time uh, at Grace that some people have managed to embody in their death the best of what they embraced in their life. Among the people who have done this throughout history, we know is Jesus. He lived his life embodying the mercy of God Embodying, are you familiar with that word? He, in his body, he, he fleshed out what the mercy of God looks like in its fullness. That, that lovely line from the Pauline passage we listened to, in him the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. As he embodied the mercy of God, he gathered those who were scattered. He found those who had felt lost and brought them back into God's embrace. He fed the hungry, he healed the sick, and freed those possessed. He converted hearts that then lived in more merciful ways. He forgave sinners. Each and every day he lived out God's mercy until a merciless world had had enough of that nonsense and put it to an end. They killed him in the most brutal way that they had at hand. They nailed him to a cross. He's completely naked, even though our artists try to give him back some dignity by covering him. They tortured him publicly. In In the moment where they're torturing him, he's surrounded by 600 armed guards, this man, naked man, wearing nothing but a cape. Then they marched him through the streets and gave him the slow public death of crucifixion. You die by crucifixion through suffocation. You you can't get enough oxygen into your body, and so you push up to get create a little space, and you keep doing that, and soon there's no there's what is it, carbon dioxide that's in the body and no space for oxygen, and so you die smothered. We could understand that given the brutal way he is killed, if at the end of life Jesus said, enough with mercy, let's go for vengeance. Would not this be the time to call down God's violence upon all and watch them die painfully and humiliated? This is not what Jesus did. He looked out upon those who had done their absolute worst to them and ask God to forgive them. Turn towards a convicted, now repentant criminal, and he didn't distance himself from him, but he embodied that grace one more time, promising that Jesus would share what God had prepared for Jesus with him at the end of the day. In the end, 
Jesus died the way he lived his every moment. Unless we think he was deluded to believe, to trust that God is mercy in such a merciless world, God raised him from the dead as if to say, this one understood, so that the cruelty would not have the final word. God showed Jesus what Jesus always showed the world, mercy. How did Jesus do that over and over again, and especially at the end of his life, how did he embody this mercy? Well, I guess it was through practice. (laughs) Practiced it every day of his life so that he had it down pat in the crucial hour of his death. He had already become mercy, and so he just lived out what he already was. Already was from the beginning, Paul would remind us. Because he knew the goal of his living, the end it was created for, he faced that brutal end with dignity and grace. And he extends that mercy to us. We're not quite as gifted at the art of forgiveness. This is the way Jesus rules the world, with mercy. Mercy is his crowning achievement. Mercy to live in mercy over and over again. Times when we utterly fail to be what God has called us to be. Jesus shows up with forgiveness and mercy again. I don't know what you have been caught up in that might be different than what God would have you live, but I I suspect alongside of the crucifixion of Jesus, um, it pales. And so if he opened his arms in that wide embrace in that moment before those who brutally failed and brought about his death, we can trust that there is space enough for you and for me in the wide, wide mercy of God. He asks you to be, learn to be merciful to yourself. Sometimes we can be our own harshest critics. We can torture ourselves our worst tormentors. His hope is that the overwhelming mercy that God shows us will shape our whole life. Having been embraced by his mercy, we too should want to be mercy for all. Maybe we start in the day-to-day work with the small stuff, the petty grudges um, that we've held on to. What small affronts might you forgive, creating a bit more space in our often merciless world? And then move on to greater challenges. Let me just give you a moment to think about what some of those things might have been that are waiting for mercy in your life. So we begin there, and then we seek to find other ways to move our world in the direction of mercy. We ask who is hungry that they might be fed. That's why we have all those announcements in the beginning of the service, means to do that. We think about who is lost that we might find them. Who is disgraced that we might offer dignity to? Who is controlled by forces that destroy them so that we might show a more worthy higher power to guide them? We look for places where torture is happening and ask that it be stopped. We ask where is death being dealt that we might struggle for life? We might think that we need to go all the way across the world, but over coffee hour I was chatting with, with Violet, and she was telling me about a friend she has who, who came here because they were shooting cannons at her people. 
and she needed a safer place to live, right? She was from the Ukraine, third grader. Where is death being dealt where we can seek life? Where else does the art of forgiveness need to rise in the places we inhabit? How can we make the one who is mercy itself rule a little more, at least in our corner of the world? A warning. In your pursuit of mercy, some of us will discover that those who harmed us did so so profoundly that we just can't find the forgiveness within ourselves to offer it to them. We want to join Jesus in the practice of mercy, but sometimes this practice, we're just not equipped for it at the moment. So my advice is don't carry around those woundings that have happened to you as though they are a weight you must forever bear. And trust those people into God's hands. And let the one who is mercy itself figure out how to be with them, how to deal with them. I think, in a sense, that's what Jesus did in our story we heard. He didn't say to his crucifiers, I forgive you. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He turned them over to the God who had been nothing but mercy in his own life. And doing that is sufficient for the day. Amen.
We confess our trust in the God who comes to us in Christ using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into heaven. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. We pray for your church and all the different congregations in it. Embolden us to work together in creative and collaborative ministries. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the earth. Protect waterways from pollution and animal habitats from destruction. Guide us in careful stewardship of waters, plant life, and animals. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. Install in every leader's heart a desire for justice and peace. Support the work of international partnerships that seek the goals of health and joy for all people. Strengthen the hope of those inflicted by the war in Ukraine. Create a resolve for your peace among all those involved. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for all who suffer injustice. Amplify the voices of the unheard and break open the stubborn systems of oppression. Bring about your righteousness and fill us all with your redeeming light. Be with those in need of healing, especially those we name now. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for, those, for the victims of the senseless act of violence in Virginia and Idaho this last week. Be near to those who have been touched by violence. Be for them a steady comfort and safe resting place. Soften the hearts and steady the minds of those who would do violence to others. May hate be replaced with love, violence with peace, and darkness with your light. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for Grace Lutheran Church. Guide our pastor, our excellent staff, and dedicated council members in discernment. Give this congregation a spirit of discipleship and service. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the blessing of the God of peace, who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Christ, and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, be a blessing in the world. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being part of our Together in God worship service. Your prayers and financial support are always deeply appreciated. Go in peace, serve the Lord.